Hey, good morning. It's still morning on Thursday. Good to be with you today again, and we just appreciate the opportunity to share with you our heart, to God's Word, Scriptures with you, have prayer with you, stay connected. Been studying this morning about the, the message for Sunday, and uh, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Wow, this is a good word for all of us. Uh, all of us need to know mercy, experience mercy for ourselves so that we can give mercy. So I'm excited about the word that's going to come forward this Sunday. Excited about the time of being with you in the parking lot and drive-in church and worship. So we're looking forward to that at 10 a.m. I want to encourage you and invite people, invite neighbors in your neighborhood to come. If they can't sit with you in your car, to come and uh, be a part of it, drive-in worship and a drive-in church at 10 a.m. on Sunday. And then we are working on our plans for the drive-in movie night. And we've ordered the big 24-foot screen, inflatable screen, and working on uh, showing a, a uh, Christian uh, series of uh, movies for about eight weeks, if it works out right. And uh, we'll be passing out flyers in the neighborhood of the church. Not only is WOW uh, members or tenders invited to come, but we want to reach out to the neighborhood. This is a very powerful series on the life of Jesus and very practical shows Jesus is a very human but yet very divine uh, both both characters that he uh, had in him and uh, it's just going to be a great time I feel like it's a great uh, opportunity for us I don't want to say take advantage of people because I never want to take advantage of people the Lord doesn't but the Lord does give us a choice but so I want to present to show the, his love yes I want to them. present the this options to people time. hear about Jesus in our neighborhood that's right there in the shadow of the church there, 1233 Shields Road. So help us pray. Right now we're in a prayer mode, praying over this that it'll all work out, praying that God will draw people, uh, praying that the Lord sure knows we need an opportunity to get out of the house for some kind of recreation and something fun to do and uh, to, to just be able to just get out of the house. You'll be able to bring your snacks with you in the car and, and your drinks and stuff like that. So it's going to be a fun night or several fun nights. We're looking for the kickoff time to be in June. The first Sunday night of June is June 7th, so we kind of got that in mind. If we can start before that, even in May, we'll, we may try to do that, but we'll have to wait and see how all the details and the plans work together. But anyway, we're glad to be with you today. And so, do you have anything on your heart just to share well, first I off? Well, I want to encourage you. Um, I know some of the restrictions are lifting uh, Friday. So we could have soaking Saturday night with a few more people. So if you want to come out for a time of worship with Pastor Larry, it's just worship and soaking in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. That's at 7 o'clock Sunday night in the sanctuary. Um, and it's limited, and we have to, you know, distance each other. But it is a time a small group could come and just be in the presence of the Lord. Well, really, technically, it's considered a religious service. And as of tomorrow night, a church uh, can have 50% capacity uh, and do the mathematics. I won't go through all the equation of it. But that means we could have social distance within the sanctuary itself, about 200 people. So that's, <laughs> that's a good bit of people. And we want to encourage you that the prophetic words we've been listening to throughout this whole time, yes. that this is a time of repentance coming out of Passover, during Passover, a time of repentance. And the season now between now and Pentecost, which is actually celebrated by us Sunday, May 31st, this is a season of resetting, uh, that our sins are forgiven, of course, through Christ, through Yeshua, and a time of resetting. And that's what God's trying to do on the face of the earth, the whole globe is reset our affections, reset our priorities that they're about God and they're about family and not so much about, you know, the material things of this world and which is what the Lord's been trying to tell us all along. And uh, that's his message to us all along that he is first and should be our first love. So it is a time of repentance, a time of resetting, a time of restoration, a time of reformation. So we're looking for that. So this should really be a time of real prayer for us as God's people. So I want to encourage you to allow the Lord through this time to reset you. I'm not saying you don't pray, but we and not need to pray more to try to earn something from God, but just to deepen our relationship with Him. We're going to need uh, for the Lord to have more of us in the days that lie ahead for us. Uh, this 
COVID-19 is not over with yet. And according to scripture, there'll be other things because yes. it says this is the beginning of sorrows. And so through prayer, through our communion, our fellowship with the Lord, we can prepare our heart, our spirit, our mind, our soul, even our physical being to be ready for the days that are coming. And that's what the Lord says. Watch and pray that these days don't catch you unaware or off guard. So we just want to encourage you. Come out Saturday at 7 p.m. Tomorrow morning, actually, at 5 a.m. We have early prayer. That's the early bird prayer. And uh, Pastor J.R., you're still having the, the uh, evening prayers over at IHOP. Or we will be. You, you will starting again this week, coming week. Okay. We have, He'll inform you of we that. We have Tuesday morning prayer in the sanctuary, men and women, at 6. 6 a.m. And Fridays, uh, the women meet in the sanctuary, and the men meet in 111, 112. So we encourage you, if you have the time and you can, come out, be a part of these prayers. Because it's we are in a critical time. Absolutely. We are in a critical time, and we must pray our way through these times. Because people that are not praying and are not looking at the Word and listening to the voice of God have great fear in these sure times. Is. And this is not what God wants us to have. Mm -hmm. He hasn't given us a spirit of fear. But He's given us a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. So we encourage you to take advantage of these times. So let me, let's share some scriptures with you today about the Lord brings hope to you. And Amen. I am so thankful for God's Word, the Bible, that we have it in a written form on our phones, on our media devices, and the written Word itself, the Bible. But uh, Psalm 71, 5 says this, O Lord, you alone are my hope. I've trusted you from my childhood. And there are people that have been a believer all their life from childhood, and they are still today because the Lord can be trusted mm -hmm. because he is a sure foundation mm -hmm. and a hope we can depend upon. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've discovered that in the last 40 plus years that I've served the Lord since 1971. He can be trusted through the hard times, the good times, the difficult times, and uh, even the good times. The Lord can be trusted. Mm -hmm. And then for those who serve the Lord, he will redeem them. Everyone who takes refuge in him will be freely pardoned, you know. We're hearing a lot about being pardoned on, on the news now with Michael Flynn and all this stuff going on. And, and But with the Lord, there is no question about it. We can be freely pardoned from our sins, from our failures, from our weaknesses. You know, all of us have weaknesses. Uh, as we're studying in Matthew 5, the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in spirit, those who realize they don't have what it takes uh, to measure up to God's standard, which is perfection. None of us do. So therefore, we have to humble ourselves and be and uh, receive meekness and uh, receive the Lord and confess our sins before the Lord, not just once, but sometimes on a daily basis, sometimes more than once a day. And that's the wonderful thing about the Lord. His throne, His heart, He's always open. He's gracious. He's merciful to us. You're going to hear more about that on Sunday. And then Job 1, or I'm sorry, Job 11, 18 says, you will have courage because you have hope. You know, when we do have hope, it does give us courage to go on, to face a situation, to face a crisis. When we have hope that, Lord, some way, somehow, this is going to work out, it does give us courage to face a crisis. And then Psalm 33, 18, 19 says, Behold, the eye of the Lord, the eyes of God are always open. They always see everything. The ears of God are always hear everything that's going on on the face of the earth. I'm glad I can't. I, I hear enough and I see enough as it is. But the Lord sees it all, good, bad, all of it. And he knows how to, de he knows how to decipher between it. He knows how to weigh between it yeah. and judge between it what's good, what's bad, what's right, what's wrong, what's evil, what's righteous. But behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him or that reverence him or hold him in respect. And upon them that, here it is again, hope, in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and even to keep them alive in famine. Wow. No matter what we're going through, even if it would go to the point of famine, the Lord's eye and his provision is upon those that hope in him. So where's your hope today? I know it's, uh, you know, I just read this morning all the stimulus packages have gone out. There is no money left unless they approve this latest, greatest plan that they've got. 
uh, cooking on the stove for us now. But all of it's been distributed as of right now. And if you didn't get that in the first round or two, then right, probably it's saying, I'm not the final word on that, it's saying that you probably won't get anything unless there is another round of it. But, you know, our hope shouldn't be in that. Our hope should be in the Lord. This is a time that, really, this is a time the Lord, that we need to just so be seeking the Lord, to allow the Lord to prove himself. He is our supernatural provision. Yes. He is our supernatural provision. I, I remember just in the first few weeks of this that that family, you said the woman was outside and a bird yes. of some size dropped a still live fish right in her yard yes. and they had that fish that night. That's amazing uh, testimony. You know, how does that happen? Oh, it's just a coincidence, you know? This family was in need. We know the family. They were in need. That God, God did it as far as quail in the in the Old Testament in the in the wilderness. Uh, Jesus took the bread and the loaves and blessed them and broke them. And here's the point of all that: when you give what you have to God, when you give it to Him, and then you allow the Lord to bless it, He has the potential and the ability to multiply it. So whatever you have. Give it to God and uh, say, how do I do that? Surrender it to the Lord. Sometimes it's like Abraham. God tested him to see if he was willing to offer his son Isaac. God knew in his mind he was never really going to let Abraham kill Isaac. He wanted to test Abraham's heart and his spirit. Are you willing to give your very best, your only son, your promised son, for me because I ask you to? And then when Abraham willingly did it, tied him up, bound him, laid him down, drew the knife, was about to make the plunge into Isaac's, you know, very being to kill him and offer him as a sacrifice. The Lord said, sin and anger said, no, don't do it. And, and now I've tested you. I know that your heart is totally for me. You know, a lot of times the Lord just puts us to the test. He wants us to know, do we really love him more than we do ourselves, or this world or the things of this world? When we pass that test, the Lord knows he can trust us and bless us. It's amazing. God loves you today. So put your hope in the Lord. Don't be discouraged by what's going on. I know we're still, some of us, not that many are trapped in a house anymore. I see a lot of cars on the road and a lot of folks out in the stores, even though we're not necessarily supposed to be doing that, but people are tired of that. And they're trying to sort through that. And we, we use all the precautionary things, but... You know, we're not trying to be violators, but yet at the same time, uh, they're trying to work through that. And I don't want to get into the po politics of that, but, you know, not areas, not some areas are not as bad as other areas in the country. So they're trying to sort through that. And thank the Lord tomorrow, Pray Friday. Pray for our leaders. Pray for our leaders. Pray National, for our president. State, Pray for our, level. our governor. Yes. You know, pray wisdom over our leaders because we are in a very... Uh, Tense. We're in a tense time, and there's a lot of under underhanded things that are coming out yeah. that have been hidden things of darkness, and we just need to pray, Lord, expose the corruption, mm. bring it out, and judge it. And we need to pray, God, give our leaders wisdom to, to lead righteously. That's part of that resetting that's going on, folks. It's a resetting for us internally, personally, individually, that our hearts love Jesus first. It's a resetting there, repentance there. But God is working globally in, yeah. in situations and undercover, covert things that are going on. And, you know, God is working to reveal truth. He's the spirit of truth. He's the spirit of righteousness and justice. And that's not just in the eternity of, of, of heaven that's going to happen. He's going to bring righteousness on the earth, too. And uh, these things are being revealed, and they should be revealed, no matter, irregardless of what party is happening in. Corrupt things should be exposed and revealed for the sake and the benefit of the people, that we can live a quiet and peaceable life in this world. So we bless you. Thank you for letting us be with you today. It's such an honor and a privilege. We added a new dimension last night to the call-in thing. People could, uh, on that number, they could call in to hear the teaching, and I was just told... Pastor JR, that we had about three that were able to call in and listen. You can't see it, but they could listen. So we're still opening venues, so we'll, we'll still tweak and work on the technology for this weekend out in the drive-in church there 
on the parking lot, improving the Wi-Fi in the parking lot and working on all that. So God bless you. We love you, praying for you. Please do remember us and the staff in prayer as we seek to continue to connect and minister to you. God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow.